Please subscribe, like, and share. It really helps us out. And of course, if you have any questions, comment below and we will answer you as soon as we can. Hi, and welcome to another video in our series on IGCSE Economics. This is Unit 4, Part 4. In today's lesson we will be learning about the growth of firms. If you haven't seen our previous videos, click on the card above. How do we compare the size of firms? It is useful to group firms together according to whether they are large enterprises or small and medium-sized enterprises. We usually call these SMEs. The size of firms can be measured in different ways. They provide useful clues about the reasons why some firms grow into very large organizations while others remain small. How would we compare a multinational serving a global market, with a workforce of 2.1 million employees, with $170 billion of capital employed, and an annual revenue of $405 billion? With a sole trader serving local households, with a workforce of one, who is also the owner and employee. They have capital employed of $5,250, with an annual revenue of $23,700. Let's look at this chart for a moment, and consider, which is the biggest company? If we think about from the number of employees, then Toyota is the winner. But how about capital employed? Then it would be ExxonMobil. They win if we look at total output too. But global market share, that would be Google with their 67% market share. How do we measure the size of firms? There are a number of ways to measure and compare the size of different companies, the size of workforce, but some large firms are capital intensive and employ relatively few workers. Their internal organization. Larger firms are divided up into different departments, each specializing in a particular function, such as purchasing, sales and marketing, finance and production. In smaller firms, the owners and employees all tend to carry out all these functions. How much capital is employed? This is the amount of money invested in productive assets that generate revenue. The more capital a firm can invest in productive assets, the more it can produce. But production by some large firms is labor intensive. Their market share. Large firms may dominate sales in the markets they supply. But not all markets are large. Firms serving small or niche markets will tend to remain small. How do firms grow? Internal growth or organic growth is when a firm expands its scale of production through the purchase of additional equipment and increasing the size of its premises. This will increase its fixed costs. External growth is when two or more firms join together to form a larger enterprise. This is known as integration. Integration involves the merger of two or more firms or the takeover of one company by another. Growth through merger or takeover is called integration. There are three different types of integration we will cover here. Firstly, horizontal integration. This occurs between firms engaged in the production of the same type of good or service. In this example, two chemical companies. Next, lateral integration. This occurs between firms in different industries in the same stage or different stages of production. An example would be a chocolate factory merging with a furniture company. Finally, vertical integration. This occurs between firms at different stages of production. In this case a cheese factory merging with a dairy farm or a cheese shop. What are economies of scale? They are cost savings from increasing the scale of production in a firm or industry. First, let's look at internal economies of scale. Increasing the size of a firm provides an opportunity to change the way it is organized, run and finance to reduce the average or unit cost of production. Next, external economies of scale. These are cost savings enjoyed by firms in large industries compared to firms in smaller industries. 
What are internal economies of scale? Purchasing economies For example discounts for bulk purchases Marketing economies For example mass advertising, or they own a distribution network Financial economies For example the ability to borrow more at lower interest rate Technical economies For example you are able to afford and employ advanced equipment Risk-bearing economies For example you are offering a range of different products What are external economies of scale? These are cost savings enjoyed by firms in a large industry. These may be Access to a skilled workforce because firms can recruit workers trained by other firms in their industry. Ancillary firms that develop and locate nearby large firms in other industries to provide them with the specialized equipment and business services they need. Joint marketing benefits, for example, new firms locating near to others in the same industry may share their reputation for producing high-quality products. Shared infrastructure, for example, the growth of an industry may persuade firms in other industries to invest in new infrastructure such as power stations, dock facilities and airports to meet increasing demand for these services. Can firms grow too large? Firms can experience problems if they expand scale too much and too quickly. Falling productivity and rising average costs result from diseconomies of scale. A large firm may run out of supplies of parts and materials. A large firm may have to raise wages to attract sufficient numbers of workers. A large firm may find it difficult to attract new customers. A large firm may suffer more industrial disputes because production lines are automated and work tasks are uninteresting. A large firm may suffer from internal communication and coordination problems, especially if it has many locations, many managers and many different activities. Now let's think about returns to scale. If a firm doubles all its inputs, and output more than doubles, the cost per unit falls. Firms are said to be experiencing, increasing returns to scale. If a firm doubles all its inputs, and output doubles, the cost per unit stays the same. Firms are said to be experiencing, constant returns to scale. If a firm doubles all its inputs, and output fails to doubles, the cost per unit increases. Firms are said to be experiencing, decreasing returns to scale. Why do some firms remain small? It may be because the market is a small, local or specialized niche market. A small firm may be unable to raise enough capital to expand. New technology may have reduced the scale of production needed in some sectors. The owner may prefer keep the business small. Smaller firms can often provide more personalized goods and services than many larger firms. Thank you for watching our video. Please like, subscribe and share. And comment below so we can clarify things for you.